This week, as President Obama visited Facebookistan in Northern California, uh, he got one of those questions that presidents probably dread getting. What's your biggest regret so far, sir? If, if you could do something differently, looking back on everything in your first term, what would it be? Uh, the president got a question like that at Facebook, and here's what he said in response. Healthcare obviously was a huge battle. It was so complicated that at a certain point, people just started saying, ah, oh, this is typical Washington bickering. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've asked myself sometimes, is there a way that we could have gotten it done more quickly and in a way that the American people wouldn't have been uh, so frustrated by? Health reform and its frustrations. Uh, remember, in the summer of 2009, cable news was wall-to-wall uh, -wall with health care and its frustrations. Cable news was wall-to-wall -wall with stuff like this every single day. Is this live? Wait a minute. I believe. This is live. Wait a minute. You want to leave? Things are getting physical. At the, at the Arl Inspector Town Hall, let's take a quick listen. Because your people told me I could. I called your office and I was told I could have the mic to speak. One day God's going to stand before you and he's going to judge you and the rest of your damn cronies up on the hill. And then you will get your just desserts. Summer of 2009, cable news could not get enough of screaming town hall meetings where Democratic members of Congress and the Senate would return to their districts and then they'd get berated by conservatives screaming at them over the health reform bill and how God would judge them for it. Uh, cable networks would cut out of their regularly scheduled segments to go to these things live. Hey, there's Arlen Specter. Watch him get screamed at. Or hey, there's John Dingle. Watch, watch him getting screamed at. Hey, there's Tom Periello. Watch him getting heckled. Cable news was absolutely transfixed by the screamy, scream, screaminess of the town hall events in the summer of 2009. Less prominently featured in that coverage was the fact that at least some of the stuff was ginned up and organized by corporate-funded front groups allied with the Republican Party. But wait, oh wait, I know, those were real people. Yes, those were real people. Uh, but there were also big vinyl-wrapped buses chartered by corporate-funded conservative groups driving across the country, organizing for these events, directing people to specific town halls, even providing specific talking points. Look, talking points for town hall attendees and instructing them on how exactly they should try to disrupt these town halls. Quote, you need to rock the boat early in the representative's presentation. Watch for an opportunity to yell out. The goal is to rattle him. Well, now a year and a half later, the same sort of thing is happening, minus the talking points and the vinyl wrapped buses. This time with Congress on recess, town hall events across the country are again, lighting up with anger and frustration. But this time it is about the official Republican party budget plan. The Paul Ryan budget plan, which drastically cuts taxes for the richest Americans back to what they were in the 1930s. It drastically cuts taxes for corporations. It gives billions of dollars in tax breaks to oil companies, those poor orphaned hard luck oil companies. Um, and it also incidentally ends Medicare. It repeals Medicare. It turns Medicare instead into a coupon system, and it makes senior citizens buy private health insurance. That Republican budget plan, it turns out, is really unpopular. That has been made clear in lots of different polling uh, that's been done over the last few weeks, some of the poll numbers here about Medicare. What's different this week, though, is that Republicans who just voted for the kill Medicare, cut taxes for the rich plan last week, Republicans who voted for the Republican budget last week, now it's the Republicans who have to go back to their districts and defend what they just did. And that has turned out to be a mighty challenge, starting with the man who authored the Republican budget. The question is, what's the best way to do this? Is it to <laughs> is it is it to redistribute? There's nothing wrong with taxing the top because it does not trickle down. We we, we, we do tax the top. Yeah. Um, the top oh. is up. That's right before somebody in the audience starts going, Paul, Paul, Paul. I love. Uh, that was Republican Congressman Paul Ryan getting heckled by his own constituents uh, as he tried to defend more tax cuts for the richest people in the country. Uh, Mr. Ryan is not alone in terms of how his constituents feel about him on this subject. Here's just a sampling of the reception that Republican congressmen are getting back home after they tried to defend voting for this plan. You do not vote for uh, um, Ryan's, uh, Paul Ryan's 
Yes, well, I did vote while that is to abolish Medicare and give people some money, it's, it will not be the Medicare that we know. Well, we asked if I voted to abolish Medicare, but I well, did not. Well, you did vote to abolish Medicare. That's no, what his, that's vote, what his vote, vote is. The Ryan budget proposes to turn Medicare into a voucher program. No, it doesn't. Well, that's yes, what does. my understanding is. Oh, that's what yes. it is. Three, <laughs> if we do nothing, we're in trouble. That's right. Why we have to raise taxes on the rich and raise taxes on the corporations. And then have never been richer in the history of our country and then, than they are now. My, and you guys just cut their taxes again. No, we don't. That is all. Oh, yeah. People won't cover seniors for the lousy $15,000 that, that is going to be offered under this plan. You did not run on this. Okay. There are ways to pay for it. Okay, and it's wrong to do this. That was uh, Patrick Meehan, Sean Duffy, and Lou Barletta, uh, all Republican congressmen, all getting the business back home from their constituents for voting for that Paul Ryan budget. Uh, then there's freshman Republican Robert Dold of Illinois. Uh, quoting from his hometown newspaper, Dold couldn't even get to the end of the presentation before audience members began peppering him with questions about the Ryan budget. It began with audience members telling Dold they don't believe chopping 10 percentage points off the highest corporate tax rate will create jobs. Listen to this. A handful of people in the audience identified themselves as business owners and accountants who said their effective corporate income tax rate is already lower than the lowest rates proposed in the Ryan plan. They pointed to companies such as GE, hi boss, uh, that pay almost no taxes despite billions in profits as evidence. Uh, then there's Republican Congressman Charlie Bass of New Hampshire, quoting from Time Magazine. Congressman Charlie Bass knew he was in for a rough night. The first question out of the gate during his Wednesday town hall in, Tils in Hillsborough, New Hampshire, was about his vote for Paul Ryan's budget. And then the second, and the third, and the fourth, fifth, and sixth questions. This stuff is happening all across the country right now. As Republicans voted for the Paul Ryan thing, and now they have to go home and defend that vote. You would not know that this was happening all across the country if you just read the Beltway Press or watched most cable TV right now. It's only thanks, actually, to liberal websites like Think Progress and Daily Coast, and thanks to reporters like Jason Lincoln's at Huffington Post, which used to be liberal, but who knows anymore. Uh, th these are the folks who have been doggedly chronicling these events. Those are the only reason that this stuff is getting out there at all right now. There are not network news crews going out to cover these town hall events like they did back in 2009. The Beltway could not get enough of it back then. But it is happening again right now, the same thing. And because it's not angry conservatives, it's angry everyone else, the Beltway press could not care less. Substantively, the overall effect of the Paul Ryan Republican budget over the next 10 years would be to add $6 trillion more to the national debt add to make the debt six trillion dollars worse that's what happens when you cut rich people's taxes back to what they were in the 30s and while republicans just lard all of that onto the deficit and the debt they are simultaneously saying they will not vote to raise the debt ceiling so they're very happy to raise the debt but they're not at all interested in raising the thing that allows us to take on more debt in metaphor land, that would be um, steering your car directly at a brick wall while going very fast and refusing to turn the wheel. Uh, in the Beltway, what this is called is courage. Of the comprehensive budget plans released in Congress so far this year, the one that actually does the most about the deficit, that balances the budget 20 years earlier than Paul Ryan even tries to, uh, that budget would let the Bush tax cuts expire. It would raise taxes on the very richest people in the country. It would cut defense spending, which after all has doubled in the past year and was, sorry, in the past decade and was already the biggest thing in the discretionary budget. It would end those subsidies for the little orphan oil companies. And on health care costs, which is still the budget eating dragon in America, um, what we would get is a public option. How does that sound compared to the cutting taxes for the rich and dismantling Medicare thing? What I just described, that is actually the most fiscally responsible comprehensive budget out there in Washington. If you care about the deficit, this seems to be the one that does it. This is the budget of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, which is, if you haven't heard about this, which is why the Beltway Press does, have, have not, which is why you haven't heard about it. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of an embarrassing thing to admit. You're not supposed to say it, and people get mad at me and write me letters from Washington from within the business every time I say it, but I'm just going to say it. The Beltway Press does not cover liberals. 
when the Beltway press covers liberals, it's not as even, it, it's not only not political science, it's not even sociology. When the Beltway press covers liberals, it's anthropology. They might as well be putting tags on our ears and watching us in a mating season. The Beltway right now says that the deficit negotiations in Washington have to be between President Obama and the debt exploding super unpopular Paul Ryan plan. Why shouldn't it be between President Obama and the progressives? If this really is about fixing the deficit, why on earth is the most fiscally responsible comprehensive budget plan that's been submitted, that's been introduced, that's out there for discussion, why is it not even on the table?